Almost every day I grab the keys to open up the door to my studio. And yes, the, the security aspect is of course really important. And every day I open up that door, I have to pass by, by a picture of my old studio, which immediately gives me that little smile on my face to basically be every single day motivated seeing the old studio and then like being able to be surrounded by this huge new studio complex. It still feels so unreal, but at the same time also extremely, extremely motivational and inspirational. I think every single producer will agree that, that the studio is like the most important place to them, the place that sparks inspiration, the place where they feel really comfortable, place that represents them and their music of course also the gear is, is really important we're all gear nerds we love to see gear we love a good room acoustic huge speakers so i thought today's episode would be a good one to actually talk about the most inspirational studios that i know of also this episode is, is a filler in my daily vlog because today i can actually share what i'm doing I have two meetings, as you know, I'm working on my album and now I got huge offers by two major labels and a huge electronic dance music label. And I, I have to deal with that. So let's talk about those. Let's actually start with my personal favorite and that is Ocean Wave Studios. It's, it's like, full of gear, like you got your analog outboard stuff, a huge nice live room, a uh, control room with an analog mixing desk, three isolation vocal recording booths. But what actually makes it the most outstanding and the most inspirational place, I think, is actually the location. It's located in the absolute middle of nowhere in Norway, right straight next to the coast, like the water's even splashing onto that building, which is just amazing. You can overlook the sea from the control room, actually from every single room. And I think that's that's worth a lot, like having daylight in your studio, being able to see the ocean, being able to hear the ocean and just stepping outside, breathing fresh air and like not being surrounded by, by the trouble and hectic life of, of, a, of a big city. So a lot of big artists in Europe choose that studio, not only because of the gear and because of the people working there with all of their knowledge, also to just like step back and like focus, relax and just leave the trouble of touring, business stuff and, and everything behind them and focus on making music. Next up, another studio famous for its location, Allure Studios in the US, very close to Woodstock. It sits right on a mountain in the middle of trees, surrounded just by green. It's definitely among the oldest recording studios still being active. It was founded in 1928 and a lot of music history was written in there. For example, David Bowie recorded there and a lot of other artists that were part of the Woodstock Festival. Nowadays, it has this huge, large control room, huge speakers, the mixing desk, of course, and a ton of outboard gear, basically, everything you need. Next up, another European studio located in the UK. This one just looks amazing. It's like an old like German techno concrete club. Very big, the control room, actually one of the biggest control rooms I know of. It's called Real World Studios. It's privately owned and you can actually book it. If you go into their website, you can book that place and just sit there and make music, listen to music, whatever you want. There is also a wooden room that looks entirely different, has more like a live atmosphere to it and, and is used for playing instruments mostly, but can be also like a full separate recording studio. The big room again had like this concept of having day light that actually gets in there which I'm also a huge fan of and it's not separating the artist into a vocal booth into an isolating booth it's like all happening in that one room and you can just interact with the artist immediately I think that's also like a huge benefit to inspiration a faster workflow and just not getting like hung up with like putting people in booths and talking over a talk back mic with them. I don't know if any one of you still remembers how I actually built that diffuser there in the back. It was like a, a ton of work, like an insane amount of work. I spent at least like three months on it, like every day a little, and two interns like sanding and gluing. So I can only imagine how much work and time actually went into 
the Blackbird Studios. It's insane. Like it's like it's it's all diffusion. Every single corner, wall, the ceiling, everything is made out of like wood pieces. Probably smells amazing in there, and and like the acoustic is is probably heavily very diffuse. I don't know how that actually would sound like because most people actually prefer absorption and diffusion usually just for the back of the studio but I would love to check it out and actually hear for myself what this room is actually capable of. I think it's mostly used for actually mastering at least that stick room. There are also a ton of other rooms that look more like a standard studio would look like. It's located in Nashville, the, the city of singing and songwriting. Almost like half of all of the US hits are actually made in Nashville. The last one is also a really, really famous one, the one by Hans Zimmer, the one making all, almost all of the Hollywood film music. It looks very cozy, very dark, very moody, everything in red. It just kind of invites you to sit there and drink your whiskey and feel like an old gentleman in a gentleman's club. And at the same time being fused with like all of the screens, the gear and like the endless possibilities to actually make music. I think it's a very individual one and it really, really it's up to your taste if you actually like it. I personally actually prefer of course my studio, like this right here is the B studio with the vocal booth and like everything is small and, and like cozy. And then there is the, the huge A studio. It's not as acoustically perfectly treated. It's really more like for the creative parts of like making electronic music. Got my DJ set. That's also very important. A little bit of outboard gear and of course the huge speakers. And my favorite, absolute, absolute favorite part is of course the view. Just being able to look outside the window and see water and look so far in an actually quite big, like almost a million people inhabitants city is, is like priceless. I love it. It's the best feature of my studio, 100%. Let me actually know about your best feature of your studio. What's the thing you love the most? And maybe also let me know what you hate the most, because for this place, it's definitely paying rent. It's not the perfect studio, it doesn't have a ton of outboard gear, it doesn't have a big live recording room, because I actually don't need it. I make electronic music within the computer, it's not that important to have a, like a live recording room. We don't record any bands. So I'm happy with it as it is, slowly, step by step, like making it perfect. Because as you might still remember, just half a year, this entire building was just empty. I know it's pink, this will go. The main desk will go there, the sweet spot right here. And me and my team, we build everything ourselves. So if you're interested in how a studio is actually built, just go back a couple of months and check it out and enjoy it. Entire day is dedicated to getting as far as possible with this vocal booth. I definitely <laughs> didn't enjoy it. It was a lot of work and extremely warm, but yeah, that's, that's probably it for today's video. Those are the most inspirational studios in my opinion. I'm thinking about making maybe another video with the most iconic studios, like where the the hottest tunes were actually made, Abbey Road and all these kind of studios. And maybe also one especially just for electronic dance music studios. For example, as you know, I've checked out Dennis Koju's studio. It just looks amazing, like that thing is from the future. I've actually never seen something like that. And also Martin Forwork that I met at the dance floor, he has also a studio actually by the same guy, the same guy that actually made it. It looks like Star Wars, which is also like pretty sick. You got a really nice studio. I was I do. told that I it's do. like yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's a really special studio. It's designed by uh, Misha Jacobi, and you can look him up. That one I'm actually going to check out in two months and make a full video about it, like a full Martin Forbrook studio tour. So definitely tune in to not miss that. I will now go back to business stuff, meetings, phone calls, Skype calls, and all this kind of shit I absolutely hate. Mm -hmm.